picture the poker table. You have the small blind, the big blind, the under the gun player, under the gun one, middle position, middle position, low jack, high jack, cut off button. Okay? No. There it is. Or not playing poker today, what? believe it or not. I'm just feeling a little bit run down, so I am gonna take you guys with me today. Gonna run some errands and do some hand history review. Meanwhile, Bobby is going down to play the 1500 PLO, so he is going to give us some updates from the Bally's Paris world while we have a nice little day off. I am gonna give 1% at least $100 up to $10,000, just in case I go deep and win in any of these and you tell them what they need to do. All you have to do is share my YouTube channel or one of the links to my videos on your social media, hashtag Lexi Gavin Poker, Lexi with a Y, and then comment below here on YouTube that you submitted, entered the contest, any, anything along those lines and so where, that we know. tell us where. And where so that we can verify and you know who you are because we're picking the winner from the comments. Do that and win 1% of Bobby Boy today. Let's go on some errands because that will be they fun. They don't want to go on errands. We're going to do Put hand review. Comments. We're going to no do hand errands. You just lost half of the <laughs> Like, okay, maybe we won't do errands. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. Be, I'm what? free flowing today. Okay, say goodbye. We are going to do some hand. You are going to do some hands. Right? I'm doing. Yes, I'm going to do hand review today. For you guys that don't know this, Lexi is a poker snob, and that's a terrible thing to. And say. I am a poker player of the people. I'm a poker coach, and I'm, he is a recreational player. Yeah, and I am a happy recreational player who understands the pain of when poker snobs, not her, of course, but poker snobs use their their language that they've invented. Reversed implied odds, <laughs> cut off. What I hope you do. I'm gonna explain things. Explain things, yeah. Pretend you're talking to Bob, dummy it down. Because when you say hijack, I still don't picture it. I love Mike Sexton. I'm really glad he invented all these terms. I believe it was him. Yes, okay, picture the poker table. So you have the small blind, the big blind, the under the gun player, under the gun one, middle position, middle position. <laughs> Low jack, high jack, cut off button, okay? No, there it is. or you have, picture a table, and I'm sitting here, and the guy across from the table has kings. How's that? All right, go play your tournament, okay. and yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have a day, me and the vlog. Okay, bye. Hey, Skittles, where are you today? We miss you. Hope you're enjoying your day off. See you tomorrow. A quick update, crazy first hand. Four cards in PLO. You know in PLO you don't have to be the best player, you just have to be the luckiest player. First hand, sit down 25,000 chips and the flop comes out 9, 10, jack. I had king, queen in my hand, so I flopped the nuts. People started going crazy on the table. My hand held up. I don't know what they have. You can see in the video, they had sets, I guess. But on the river, they kept going crazy. I tripled up first hand, so crazy. I mean, long way to go, obviously, but if my luck holds like this, somebody might win a lot of money here. So I am doing some cooking action. I made some green beans and broccoli, made a salad. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a roasted vegetable salad situation today. Important to eat your greens, guys. Anytime I make any kind of food, I always make a little bit extra so that I don't have to uh, worry about cooking the next day. So I'm gonna eat and figure out what I'm gonna do. Let's check in with Bob, shall we? All right, that's my stack and going into the second break. <sighs> I wish I had one of your sticks that you had. I'm really not good at PLO. I'm not gonna lie about it. I don't know the odds. I barely know good starting hands. I had an interesting hand and maybe you guys, you know, why don't you guys put in the comments the rankings of the uh, hands that you think we should be playing in PLO because I get confused. If you have five, six, seven, eight, and it's not a lot of your stack, should you play that? I think you should play that. I try to see cheap flops. What I try to do in PLO is I try to see uh, cheap flops and then try to maximize on them. And the way this tournament's been going for me is I've been losing at least seven out of 10 pots that I try to get into. I get bet out of them or I never, I rarely make it to the river because it goes pot, pot, pot and I'm out. And then I win one or two and these 
things have been huge. We started with 25,000 chips. I have about 110, 105, 110,000 chips. So I want a couple big pots. I don't know what the people were thinking. I had one guy who was trying to run a bluff on me. I think that was my read on him. The guy next to me said, you know, I guess I'm not gonna be able to bluff you with my mask on because the other guy had his mask. But that other guy did the same lean forward, tilt the head thing. Now I'm all paranoid. Did somebody watch the vlog and they're doing that on purpose because I mentioned it? Or is this guy bluffing? So he put all his chips in except for 5K and I put him all in and then he folded and kept his 5K chips. So I don't know. To, tilting of the head is my new read on people. And so far I'm two for two for big pots. So go us. Don't forget if I happen to cash this, somebody is going to get a guaranteed $100 up to $10,000 or 1% of the total money that I win. If I make it over uh, $10,000, it'll be over a hundred. So comment, comment, comment if you've got any advice because I actually sit here and read all the comments and every once in a while you'll see me respond. Lexi responds to almost everything. Welcome to my office. Welcome to where the magic happens. Here's a little office tour for you. Got my little butt crack statue there. My little dancing yoga queen. And bathroom over there. So I got a good little setup here. We got dual monitors here. So this is where I do a lot of my uh, lessons and a lot of my content creation. So we are going to get into some hands that I played in previous videos on the vlog. And I just want to go into a little bit more analysis, if you will, through you know some of my decisions and my thought process. Bobby Boy convinced me not to take you guys on errands because apparently you don't want to do that. Let me know in the comments if you want a day in the life with me and the things that I do on the daily when I'm not playing poker. But for now, I'll spare you guys. Let's play this one and then I will pause it and we can talk about it. So this is the $1,500 six max. I actually did end up cashing this one. So that was a, a fun one. Level. So the blinds were 200, we 300 with the 300 big blind ante. It folds around at the button. The button opens to 700. I have ace, deuce of spades in the big blind and I call. So this is a spot where I definitely like a call from the big blind. You can consider three betting the offsuit combos like ace deuce off or ace three offsuit just because they're a little bit harder to play post swap. But this is a nice uh, hand to close the action in the big blind. You are, we are heads up with the button. So I think flatting here is totally fine. We're heads up. The flop is ace of diamonds, seven of diamonds, two of clubs. So I flop top and bottom pair. I check. And he see bets big, he see bets 1800. And I check raise to 5,500. So this is a spot where I think that a lot of people like to slow play and just call and kind of play their two pair trappy. But here's the thing, I like fast playing my top and bottom pairs or my middle and bottom pairs or my middle and bottom sets because you're not blocking some of their calling range. So they are gonna have some like, like seven X combos that they might call a check raise with. If we had like seven deuce, then and not that we're ever flatting seven deuce from the big blind, but if we were flatting seven deuce suited, that's also a good spot to check raise because you're not blocking top pair. So he's gonna have a lot of ace X to call you with. So in this situation where the button opened, he is gonna have a lot of air, but he also is gonna be C betting a lot of his, you know, aces and some of his middling pairs. So I think that this is definitely a spot where we wanna check raise. He can also have some diamond combos or maybe some like backdoor straight draws like four or five of clubs or three five of clubs or something that will definitely peel plus it kind of looks a little bit bluffy when we check raise here and you don't only want to be check raising your strong hands you want to have some bluffs here and this is a board that is pretty good for the big blinds range us as the big blind so like we are going to be check raising hands like four five of clubs and three five of clubs or five of diamonds four of something you know like so there are going to be a lot of hands that we are going to be check raising as a bluff so this does kind of look bluffy we do want to fast play this here he thinks for a while and then he four bets to 14k i'm just like what the heck i'm like is he going ham right now with like ace king i'm like this is great i was hoping he had like either ace king or like king queen of diamonds that he was just like gonna go all in on the flop with so i think for a little bit and then i shove and he calls after 
So I do like fast playing this. Like if in the event he has diamonds, there's a good chance that he's willing to stack off here on the flop. Whereas if we just call and he doesn't hit his diamond on the turn, then he's just gonna be shutting down a lot. So, I mean, he is gonna likely shove a lot of turns anyway, but there is a chance that he is going to be shutting down on the turn. So we want to give him incentive to push the action here on the flop. I also think that his range consists of a lot of like ace king ace queen ace jacks maybe he has like ace queen with the queen of diamonds or something that he's definitely not going to be going anywhere with so definitely a great spot to push the action after a while of tanking and he has ace eight offsuit no diamonds so uh, i run pure the term is the four of hearts and the river was the three of clubs so we got a double there that's all right. great all right so that was a fun hand i'm so pissed i lost sorry i lost got him in good he hit a flush on the river at the top set. I could re-enter, but this just isn't my game. So back to you, Lexi. So this is the 1K freeze out. Spoiler alert, I actually wound up making a deep run in this. I got 41st place for $8,300. So that was a nice little payday. There are some graphic errors in this one or, or typos, so I will correct that. Just side note, I'm putting out a vlog every single day. So there are gonna be some graphic errors from time to time, but we are working out the kinks. Again, this is a new vlog. I really only started like three weeks ago producing a lot of content. So bear with me, it will get better. So the blinds are 2,000, 3,000 with a 3,000 big blind ante. And I raise pocket fours in middle position. 2,000, 3,000 with a 3,000 big blind ante. I raise middle position to 6K. I have pocket Okay, so this under the gun to 3K part is wrong on the right here. So I raised to 6,000 in middle position with pocket fours. Now this was a spot where we were sort of approaching the money. We were getting kind of close. I believe the bubble broke around five or 6K big blind here. So the closer you get to the money, and if you have a stack, the more hands you can play because people really start to tighten up as they start approaching the money. And I remember this particular table was starting to play on the tighter side. I think that they all really wanted to squeeze in the money. So, so the tighter your table, the wider you can open, especially if you have a stack approaching the bubble. So we open pocket fours in middle position to 6,000. Get fours, hijack calls and the big blind calls. The flop is ace of spades, two of hearts, and five of clubs. I see that 6K hijack calls, big blind pulls. Okay. I open a 6K, the hijack and the big blind call, ace, deuce, five, rainbow flop. So here we have, you know, decent showdown value. We don't totally want to just check and then have them bet the turn and then us call. So we don't love check calling here. So anytime you're debating a C-bet, you always wanna ask yourself, is my hand strong enough to check call? I guess it kind of is, but I also, you know, we have the gut shot. We can represent the strong ace combos, whereas they really can't because they didn't three bet pre-flop. And we do block some of their raising range, right? Like the big blind should be check raising a lot of four X combos, maybe like four, six of hearts or something or four, six of spades, but we block those hands. So when we're blocking, their check raising range or their raising range, then we can see bet wider, right? They're going to have missed this flop a lot. Like the hijack really should only have too many like 2x combos. His 2x combos that he can have are blocked by the board, right? Like there's like he can have ace deuce, but I would assume he's going to fold the offsuit combos of ace deuce and flat the suited combos, but they're blocked by the board. And the big blind really, I mean, he can have some two pairs like ace five, ace deuce, but he shouldn't really have two five, like maybe suited if he's flatting like a little too wide from the big blind, but it's a pretty safe board for us to continue with a C bet is my point here. So we C bet 6K, hijack calls and the big blind folds. The turn is the ace of clubs. High check and hijack checks back. So I don't think this is a great card for us to continue because I think the hijack is gonna have a lot of like middling pairs, maybe pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines, things of that nature. And once the board pairs, it's less likely he's gonna be willing to fold those hands. He'll be more inclined to call another straight with a five. He'll be more inclined to call with those middling pairs like sixes, maybe threes, sevens, things like that. So I think that we just check, hope he checks back. I 
I think now that we've narrowed this down to a heads up pot, we can probably comfortably call if we check and the hijack bets, I'd probably call a bet, especially considering we have the gut shot, but I don't wanna continue bloating the pot anymore. I think this is a spot where we can either try to check this down and get to showdown, or if there's like a good scare card on the river, maybe like a king or a queen, then we can actually maybe turn our pair into a bluff at some frequency. But we check and fortunately he checks back. The river is a three of hearts, so I hit my four cards straight. I bet big, I bet 19K, and he tanks for like a second and then calls and shows an ace. Great river card for us. We hit our gut shot. I think that in the event he has an ace, then we need to be betting big here for value. I think there's a good chance if he does have an ace, he's not gonna raise us because I think that he's gonna be three betting his like ace king and ace queen combos. So I don't think we have to worry about him like three bet shoving on us. And I do wanna bet big to really polarize my range here. Like once we check back the turn, it looks weird. It looks like we don't have an ace very often because we are gonna be continuing to bet with an ace. So I do think that even if he doesn't have an ace, I think he's gonna make some hero calls with some of those middling pan pairs like nines and tens and things like that. So that's why we bet big, we bet big. And fortunately he called and mucked one of his cards but showed an ace. So we got to you know scoop some nice value there. All right, you guys, let's do one more here. So here, this is the $600 deep stack. I had gotten short, I was down to 10 big blinds and it folded to me in the small blind. So action folded around, I was in the small blind and I have queen six offsuit. I decide to ship it here. In a situation where you're just, it's just you and the big blind, you have so much fold equity. And this player had, I believe like double my stack. So he would have had to call off half of his tournament life. So I shove here. Hold it to me in the small blind. I shipped it with 10 bigs, got called by king queen. Do I get there? Oh, it looks like one. Seven. Seven. Nope. <laughs> All right, so I brick that. But what I do want to show you guys is some solver action. This is a push fold chart and you can find this on the training site that I'm a coach for. I'm actually a coach for pokercoaching.com. It's a training site owned by Jonathan Little and there's a ton of great pros in there, including Matt Affleck, Faraz Jaka. I can actually run you guys through the site. And I do have three free days to Poker Coaching Premium. It's, it's their highest membership. You can sign up for three free days, no credit card required. All you have to do is visit pokercoaching.com slash Lexi. The link is in the description box below. But first let's talk about that hand really quick. So remember, folded to me in the small blind and I shoved 10 big blinds with queen six offsuit. And then this is the card matrix, right? So then what you do is you select your position. So for me, I was in the small blind. You, you enter in your number of big blinds that you had. I had 10. The ante size was big blind ante and we were 10 handed. No adjustments need to be made. So here you can see that you can shove almost 72% of hands from the small blind when it's folded to you with 10 big blinds. You can see here where my arrow is, queen six offsuit is definitely a shove. The reason for that is because again, you have so much fold equity when it's just you and the big blind. The big blind is gonna have 100% of these random hands. So sometimes he's gonna wake up with a hand, but more often than not, he's just gonna have to fold a lot. And then just picking up the blinds and annies there is a big win, especially when you're short stack. So here we have a lot of uh, different courses, masterclass series, different classes. We have homework assignments. And then if you scroll up here to the left, we do a ton of quizzes and they're just like interactive quizzes. So it's as if you are playing the hand. So here we are, we have all of the different hands that all of our different coaches have played. Here I am, here's my little face, Jonathan Little, Alex Fitzgerald, Matt Affleck, Evan Jarvis. And then what you do is you just click into one of the quizzes. King two suited in a $10,000 buying tournament folds around to me on the button. Should we fold, call, raise to 3,000, or raise to 5,000? So it plays and then you choose what you think the answer is. I'm gonna say raise to 3,000, um, but he's pretty deep, so it might be more. 
this yeah. is just a standard spot to raise. Yeah. I mean, okay. So then you just kind of play the hand street by street. So there's just a lot of great content, millions of quizzes on here, millions of different courses and classes and webinars. We do live webinars. So you, the students can ask us coaches what to do, ask us any questions that you may have. So it really is a great training site. So again, check out the description box below to get that link, or you can just visit pokercoaching.com backslash Lexi. Lexi with a Y, don't forget. I have decided to go get a massage. I deserve it. I think all of you deserve it too. It's been a long WSOP and you've stuck with me too. So let's go for some relaxation. Well, Bob busted the PLO. You guys saw the footage. I'm still pissed. I'm mad at the game. Why? Tell me how you feel then. Don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing. You are. I had a, I got them in good and I lost and I hate it. So you flopped the nut straight, correct? I had two hands. My first breakout hand I had the top set. I lost a chunk of my stack. Then the second one, I had queen 10 blank blank and the flop was ace king jack. Okay, so you, two clubs. So there was a flush draw out there, you flopped the nuts, and you had one club one locker club. in your hand, right? Right. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with getting in on the flop. The only thing that sucks is if your opponent has the same hand plus the club redraw. That's what he did. Right, so. But he had a shitty club. And you, it was for a lot of chips, correct? For a lot of chips. So there's argument to maybe call the flop and then pot any clean turn, any turn that doesn't pair the board or bring in the flush. That's something to consider. But I also think that it's totally fine. You flop the nut straight with a club locker. Like, okay, you got cooler. I've got to come up with a different hobby. <laughs> I cannot let a stupid game make me this upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's a grind. You guys see we're playing every single day. Actually, not me. I got a massage today and took the day off and it was glorious. But tomorrow you have the seniors event. <laughs> Dude, I got to go to Rico and get that um, fake ID. <laughs> So tomorrow he has a seniors event and... Seniors is anybody over 50. <laughs> I barely qualify. Right, right, yeah. right. He just, just made it, right? Yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, contest still stands. We are gonna be giving away 1% of the next tournament that we catch. So Bob, if you catch the seniors, you're gonna give away 1% of that. And then I am gonna be giving away 1% of the next tournament that I play. Stay tuned to find out what that is. Colossus coming up Colossus, weekend. the ladies event. We got a lot of good stuff. The lady, yeah, it's a great one. And the Colossus is a great one, great value. Well, you take tomorrow off and rest and I'll go work for the fans. <laughs> All right, I wasn't gonna tell them, but yeah, I am taking taking tomorrow off as well. I'm taking a whole two days, yeah, today and tomorrow off to kind of regroup. It's been a lot. I'm starting to feel something in my chest, but I did take a COVID test and I was negative and I will take another one and be negative before I resume playing. I think I'm just run down. This always happens around this time of the series. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. To enter the contest, all you gotta do is share my YouTube channel or a link to my video on your social media, hashtag Lexi Gavin Poker, and then comment below here on YouTube that you submitted or entered or something like that so that we know who you are. We're picking the winner from the comments. Congrats again to Cindy, the winner from last contest. We wanna win you guys some money. The idea is when we win, we want you guys to win. Yep. So thanks again for watching, love you all. And have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow for Bob's seniors events and maybe some more hand review. Okay, love you, bye.